How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Minecraft Custom Mod Pack Testing. I have a lot of stuff to talk about today and not a lot of time to record. I actually just recorded a whole slew of things and ended up screwing up because I realized that um, I was rambling on for like 35 minutes and I didn't want to have an episode that was that long. On the episode that I just scratched, we did some stuff, um, namely with Ars Magica, and that's what took so long, is that I was like explaining Ars Magica stuff, and then I went into what I wanted to talk about, which is kind of a little speech, um, which is not good to do in the same episode. So we are going to get to Ars Magica stuff later, I think, um, and do a little speech day, uh, but I will show you what we did. Because it is kind of important, and we're gonna we're gonna do some Ars Magica stuff while we talk. But this is probably gonna be a short episode because I didn't think I would have to record twice. So here's the base, nothing changed. Here's the village. They're in the middle of upgrading the main place. I think you see they're putting the paths down and these nice fancy paths. Very cool, very cool. Very happy about that. Love to see this village go the way it's going. Um, yeah. So let me show you the Arch Magica base which I built on the floating slime block thing here and let me give you a brief explanation of how it goes before we move on to something else we have three spells long range dig, long range punch, and fireball um, when you want to do Arch Magica which if you don't know it's like casting spells I can like long range dig right I dug it, it's been digged place back uh, so, you want to come over to your oculus, it's the first thing you want to make, and basically you have points to spend, uh, if you mouse over the different things that you can spend your points on in these tech trees, you'll see some fonts are red, some fonts are green, and some fonts are blue. Uh, up here we have three, we have three numbers, uh, blue, green, and red, those are the points of each color you can spend. Blue is kind of the earlier stuff, and then green is midway, and red is generally towards the end. So we only have blue, because we're pretty new into it, and I have spent points on projectile, physical damage, fire. These are all the offensive stuff. Then you have defensive stuff, utility stuff, a talent tree, which is like passive stuff, I believe. Um and an affinity stuff which is basically like how much of each element do you use and I used some books to give me a lot of affinity close to stone um, but you know I don't know if we that'll probably change over time uh, that was just because two of our spells are stone and I had two books of stone <laughs> so then you want to create a book and quill you come over here and you kind of like mix and match these things so if we do if we did projectile and fire damage that would actually create this fireball spell that we had that's how we did that and then you put in the book and quill um, and then it like actually makes that book a recipe for a spell now here's an example of one such book and it is for the long range dig spell uh, it, you put it, you have to make this multi block structure, and you have a couple different block choices for everything. But you need a main block, which we chose nether brick. Then you need a, uh, then you need a, a cap block, which we chose emerald blocks, and that's actually a pretty good combination. You need magic walls and uh, this special block to put it all together. And then I'm gonna put this on, book on the thing, uh, on the lectern. You need a lectern and a lever as well. And you can see there's a list of materials, blank runes, ventium dusts, arrows, snowballs, orange rune, iron shovel, iron pickaxe, and a spell parchment. Um, we have found a whole bunch of runes. Runes are not hard to make. Let me make some for you right here. This is blank runes right here. And then you just dye them different colors to get the different color runes. Um, and But we have... I didn't need to do that because we found so many in the chocolate craft dungeons, which is really cool that those hook up. I love that. And anyways, so then you basically throw in a blank rune on the ground, particle effects come, sounds play, and then you throw each one of these items in that order. Uh, and it actually appears, the item appears right here, which one you need next, so you don't have to remember. And out pops the spell, and that's that. And each spell c costs mana. Um, I know this is fast, I'm sorry, we're going to do it more in depth, probably next episode, or we might build the bridge next episode. 
but like I said, I, I, I don't have much time. So, Dig costs 22.5 mana, Long Range Punch is 90, and Fireball is 270. We are level 13, which is that blue 13 you see above my other, my experience level. And at level 13, you have 623 mana, which is cool. So that's how much mana we have. Uh, if we can come down here, we'll find something. It is becoming nighttime, so we should find something to cast it on. We'll start with fire. Got him. And then maybe a long range punch. Except we've got to wait for the burnout to go down, which is that red bar over there. He's got a flaming bow. So we can't really spam this because if you do it, if you spam it too much, the burnout bar on the left, the red bar, goes up a little too high and your spells start casting more, uh, costing more and more to cast. So as you can see right now with our current low level, we don't really, oh, I don't have enough mana to cast that anymore. So we're done. We're, we're, we're like out of mana. We have 40 and we need 90. It's going up pretty fast because we're level 13 at this point. But, you know, it's not viable yet for us to use this in combat. That's something we gotta change. Okay, speech time, which is a speech... Look at that, look at that, they're upgrading the place. Okay, speech about this mod pack, where it's going, what we're gonna do with it, and my thoughts on it. We start by saying, Mr. and Air Man, the people who actually assembled the pack and came up with most of the ideas of what to put in it, uh, did a great job. This pack has not crashed, I have found no broken textures, and for the most part, the map pack is pretty fun. Um, but I, as many of you may know, uh, am a college student who is studying computer science and I am studying artificial intelligence. That said, uh, I have always liked games and computer science is very related to games because most games, um, you know, there's still tabletop games and card games and board games and all those other stuff and those are all well and good, but the biggest part of the industry is, of course, in the video games. Look at him go! Oh, you see that? Pretty cool. Um, let's start prepping this area for the bridge. I think this tree is going to need to go. It's got to go. Uh, anyways, anywho, so uh, I've taken multiple courses on game design and stuff like that. Uh, I'm in one right now that's very, very intense, and um, I have learned quite a bit from it. And. The more the more I study it, the more I sort of think that maybe that is actually something. Oh well, look at this. That looks weird. Let's fix this. That looks really weird. <laughs> uh, the more I think that I might, you know, go into this. But point is, I've been thinking a lot about what I've learned in those classes when it comes to a lot of stuff related to the stream. You know, how it is that I'm gonna have the PvP games work on the donator server how it is that, you know, I have ideas for Minecraft mods and plugins and stuff like that, and learning to make those and stuff like that has been kind of fun. And yeah, so basically I have some thoughts on the mod pack, and I have an idea for a mod to add to it, and if this mod exists, I want someone to tell me so I don't have to make it myself, otherwise I'm going to give it my best shot to make it myself, and you know, maybe just get some help on forums and stuff like that if I can't do it. But it might, al it might also just not be possible. It's a strong possibility with this idea. But the idea is basically creating a mod that will restrict your access to a lot of crafting recipes just like in um... Okay, come here. Just like in... I want to kill you. What's it called? Uh, Blood and Bones pack that we played. That's kind of where this idea came from. And yeah, that already exists. It's called Mind Tweaker. And I'm going to use it. Um, yes, now I can be you. What did you just drop? Titanium nuggets? Are you kidding me? That's crazy valuable. Oh, we have to kill each and every one of those we find from now on. Let's see if we can make a nugget. Can't, or we can make an ingot, can't we? Do Ta-da! It's another, another titanium ingot, so we could make like a titanium sword, which I'm pretty sure is pretty good. Um, so, that would be the mod pack idea. Uh, or the mod idea right there, but... My, so there's already a mod like that's called Mind Tweaker, and I'm gonna use that. Uh, but, what I want to create is a mod that will go through and disable all of the, all of the recipes, the crafting recipes, for certain mods. 
until you advance to the next era. So right now we have a medieval pack going on right now, a bunch of medieval mods. Um, Ars Magica that we just saw, we've got these millionaire kingdoms, kind of, I guess you could call them, growing. Uh, you've got this has been bugging me. They are not decaying, and I don't know why. Uh, you've got, you know, ore spawn and all this other stuff. Tinker's Construct is a little medieval because it's kind of like an advanced smithing sort of deal, which I like. Um, oh, man. Okay. Hold on. Let me pause. Let me pause because I didn't do the speech as good as I did last time. Part of the thing in the game design groups, or classes, that we talk about a lot is like stuff like feedback loops, which is uh, pretty sure. <laughs> pretty sure feedback loop is like when, uh, for example, in an arcade game, um, you would do, you would be like a spaceship and you're shooting your enemies. And you're shooting your spaceship enemies and you get more points for shooting your spaceship enemies. And if you shoot a lot of spaceship enemies without letting any of them shoot you, we're going to do some cleanup while I talk, by the way, then you will get a multiplier right and suddenly you're still getting two points for shooting your enemies better and stuff like that and it'll keep going up and up and up and then the better you do the more points you get and the bigger your multiplier is and then you spend those points on upgrades or power-ups or something like that uh, and you it makes it easier to get points because you have those upgrades and power-ups and the easier it is to get points the more points you have the more points you have the more you can spend the more power-ups you can have etc etc oh look at this so is that from again? That's from Ars Magica, from Moonstone. Um, so, yeah, that would be... I wouldn't put the other Moonstones. Oh, I think I moved them over up here. Let's go put this one with it. So that's like a feedback loop, right? And Minecraft has a lot of those because you get your resources and you get your enchanting tables and you get your food farms and all this other stuff and you use it to get more resources which you use to make better farms and better tools and better enchanting and more experience and all this other stuff and it builds into itself. You start off with your stone tools and then you use your stone tools to get your wheat farm and your wheat farm to get your bread and your bread to be able to go farther mining and your mining to get iron and then diamond and it builds into itself and snowballs until you end up with mountains and mountains of resources that you will never use. <laughs> and then you start over. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so that's sort of how it works. And with this mod pack, things work okay, but they could be better. Uh, I, I think they could be better. One of the issues that I have is that I spend some time doing Tinker's Construct which is great, and it Tinker's Construct is a great feedback loop. You start off with some resources, you put it together, and you uh, get some okay tools, and you use those tools to go get cobalt and ardite and manelium, and then you get crazy overpowered tools. It builds on itself again, um, which is good, and that's a great mod, and I'm glad that it works like that, and I'm glad we have it in our pack. But uh, then I have this cutlass, which is pretty good. I don't know if it's that good, actually. Um, I think it could have been better with manelium as a put. Well, but whatever. It's, it's pretty good. Um, put a whole bunch of quartz on it. Repairs itself. It's never going to break. It, it does a lot of damage. And we killed a bat. We killed a bat, which is going to... Do they have everything they need? They do. Oh, this is so cool. Look at them upgrading this place. It's so cool. So we killed a bat, and now we can morph into a bat, and we can fly around. So now, I come across the chocolate craft dungeon, and I wear my ore spawn armor, which we do need to make more of, by the way. Let's do that. So I wear my ore spawn armor, which is designed to be balanced against the ore spawn mobs, which, frankly, are... Can I repair this? I think... I feel like we test this all the time, and it doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, so... It's balanced against ore spawn mobs, which are tougher, so the armor is pretty good. And then, uh, keep those till later since those are about to break. And get the helmet. And the diamond boots are. The diamond boots are fine for now. It's not, not an issue. I don't. Just make sure we still have some. Oh, darn it, I already had one. I should have come down here to check. <sighs> Anyways, so um, I fly up to the top of a chocolate craft dungeon, like, you know, one of, it's one of 
these big things or something like that. Let's do some exploring while we talk. So I'm just going to fly this general direction. You fly up there and you get to the boss room and you wreck it with your Tinker's Construct tools and you never get hurt with your Orb Spawn armor and you loot the chests which have not so great gear in it and you leave and that's fine. Um, but it, it doesn't stay very fun, right? Because you there's no challenge and there's no progression. But... Uh, then you have a bunch, so you you do that you get a bunch of resources you get a bunch of tools you, then you want to go mining you use some cool mining stuff great whatever they have extra utilities in here you could use ender quarries that's what we're building towards right now uh but then that's basically it then what do you do right what do you do you do witchery i guess for fun but you don't need to it doesn't help you any is, is this really all that's out here great we picked the perfect direction <laughs> Uh, so you do witchery, um, could do more Ars Magica, I think Thomcraft is in here, I don't know if Thomcraft can stay, unfortunately, because they're a little picky with their permissions, I don't know, I'll talk to the guy, um, even though he said don't talk to me about it, I'm going to do it anyways, because I uh, might be able to persuade him, but that, that that's not yet, um, yeah, so that's what you do, but then, you know, these things help you, but unless you're on a server... There's not much more you can do other than fancier and fancier AE systems, which lets you do what exactly? I don't know, you know what I mean? Like, it seems like you kind of plateau with um, your feedback loop pretty early, where you're done, right? Things stop feeding back in because you've reached maximum efficiently a little early. Um, basically, kill a bat and get Tinker's Construct tools, and you're fine. So, how do you solve that? Well, um... I think a good way to solve it would be to have more tech mods in it. But technical mods uh, don't fit the medieval theme at all, which is too bad. And that's actually why we don't have many or any. We really only have like Project Red Thermal Expansion, is it here? Yeah, Thermal Expansion is definitely technical, but it kind of fits because it kind of does. Just pretend like it does. Um, I, we're go. We're pretending that that's steampunk, which is fine. Um, extra utilities has some technical stuff in it, which works as well because it's kind of magical. Like these quarries don't actually have any pipes or anything. Really cool. Um, and then like Project Red is pretty technical, um, which doesn't really fit. AE doesn't fit either. Um, Project Red just adds a bunch of world generation stuff, like these. Um, Volcanoes you keep seeing, which are cool, which is why we have it in, which is good. Works for me. Um, ah, these are new villagers, I guess. So, but like, what about if we had computer craft? And what about if we had like flans mod? Um, and what about if we had Galacticraft? Because then that adds another some more realms to go to. Like we have Mistcraft in here, right? Let's tackle. Let me give you an example of how we do. How of how we do. Okay, this is a completely new place I've never explored. Oh, kind of figured that's where the boss would be. <laughs> well, we'll find him. Is this it? Is that the guy? That's the guy. Um, we also don't have as many hearts as we could have with Tinker's Construct, we could get more. There we go. Done. That was that. And that's not really in the spirit of it. I don't think. Um, so, yeah, what was I saying? I was saying how that's how it is, isn't it? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what about if we had those other technical mods, what about if we had that other crap and it doesn't fit the theme how do we solve that issue well I would like to create that mod I was just talking about where it says okay Galacticraft you need to be in the future era futuristic era to use that or computer craft you need to be in the modern era to use that uh, and so 
it goes by the world or by the server. So this world would have an error era in it, and I could only craft like the stuff that's in the mod pack right now, or you know minus like AE or something like that. I could collect the resources. The world generation would be the same, but I don't have the ability to get some runes. You know, uh, but I could only use sort of medieval fantasy style stuff. Mage robes. Cool. Um, and then, then once I build this huge structure, right, with like a whole bunch of iron blocks and diamond blocks and gold blocks and sacrifice some high level stuff from the mods we have in, like in the config file, you could say you need to sacrifice some high level Tinker's Construct stuff and sacrifice some high level Ars Magica stuff, high level Witchcraft stuff. Sort of give of the mods currently available, get to a lot of their end games, end game stuff, and then toss them all in this multi block structure and it'll consume the items and it will uh, then for that world for, or for that server and all the players on it, it will unlock the ability to progress to the next era. And I want to find a nice tricky way <laughs> they have villager prisoners. A nice tricky programmer way of automating that so that my mod, m much like the morph mod, will kind of work the way it should work with basically every mod. Um, and then all you need to do is set it up manually before you create your world in the config file how that's going to work. And then we could add that to the mod pack, um, and yeah. So that's what I'm trying to do. So yeah, so that place, like, look, look how much is in there. We don't need to do it. All the good stuff is up at the top, but we can fly. So who cares? We're done. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much that. Uh, that's the end of this episode. Um, uh, my stream is gonna start late today, but that's fine. It'll go late. It's already almost 11 p.m. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, so that that would be sort of my idea. If you have any, if you know of any mods that like sort of do that, again, I'm gonna use Mind Tweaker because Mind Tweaker is what Blood and Bones dot uses to remove crafting recipes, but they remove it once, and then they don't ever change it. Can I do like? I was wondering if that worked. I do have cheats enabled on this, by the way, because we're testing a mod pack and it seems silly to not have that. Um, so you can't do that on single player. But so, so I think I know that Mind Tweaker has the ability to have a server specific or world specific uh, removal of recipes. Which means that, like, if I create a world in this with this mod and say, don't craft computer craft stuff in this world because you're not in the right era. It, that mod has the ability to say in a new world you can craft computer craft recipes because you are in the right era. Um, so that way it's not like there's only one way to use the mod back. Oh, oh, here's these guys. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here titanium. Oh my god, you are hard to hit. Jesus! Get over here! Oh my god. I need my bow. Oh yeah, right. Like, I'm gonna be able to hit you with my bow. Oh! Oh wow! Oh, and I missed. Waste of a whole buttload of mana. Lucky blocks! Let's do this. So I know that that part's possible, but what I don't know is possible is if there's some clever way to get all the block ID numbers of things from each mod. So I don't know if there's some way in in the code to say I would like all the block IDs from Galacticraft. And then say, don't let you craft those blocks. I also don't know Lucky Blocks, Pumpkins, Jack Lanterns. I also don't know if there's the ability to say, okay, change this mod's config file and reload it mid mid play like mid you know what I mean like that seems like something that would need like a server restart or for you to exit the mod pack and then do it again so that doesn't seem cool because I don't want to have to 
that that doesn't that would make it not possible. I don't want to have to have a mod that requires you to restart your server every time you do something in it. Um, Chainmail. So that's that. I'm gonna look into whether or not it's possible, and that will open up. First of all, that'll allow us to add like a hundred more mods to this pack because it'll allow us to do futuristic mods, modernist modern sort of mods, and past mods. And it will allow us to uh, have more well-rounded pack that doesn't let you stop once you can fly and have good tools. Because um, right now, all I can think of to do is build, right? Which is fine, but it would also be kind of cool if we got some cool farms going on. Is Railcraft in here? Like, that might... I don't know. Railcraft doesn't... I don't know. I, I don't know too much about Railcraft. That's my idea. Might be possible, might not be possible. Wanted to tell you guys about it, because maybe you guys will know a mod that already does it, or maybe you'll have thoughts on the mod. Um, also, I wanted to get an episode of this out, because it's been quite a while since we did an episode on this mod pack. But I have been playing. Don't worry, I have been playing. Uh, you guys probably won't see any, like, uh, promotion of this, or talk about this going public until the summer, when I can fully address it. And also, if I can see if I can add this mod that I'm hoping to create. So, thank you all for watching. I'm going to go get ready for the stream, because I'm way behind. I apologize for that. And I will see you all in the next episode. Eddie out.